All right. Uh, in this video, I'll be uh, starting chapter eight. Uh, chapter eight is about power series. Okay, we have four sections in uh, chapter eight. We will be uh, covering all the four sections. Uh, let's get started with uh, section eight point one. Uh, section eight point one is also about uh, power series. Okay. All right. I want to. Uh, start this section by defining what we mean by a power series. Uh, here is the definition, definition 8.1, uh, power series in X, okay? Let AK, K goes from zero to infinity, be a sequence of real numbers and let X be a variable. A power series in X is a series of the form sigma K goes from one zero to infinity, AK, X to the power K, okay? That is, the power series, if you write this power series in the expanded uh, form, you will get A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared plus A3x cubed, uh, so on and so on. Okay, so this is the definition of a power series in X. All right, this is the most important part in this uh, definition. When do we say that the power series converges at a point X is equal to C? Here is the definition. If C is a real number at which the series of constants, sigma k goes from zero to infinity, a k, c, c to the power k converges, the power series, k goes from zero to uh, infinity, a k x to the power k is said to converge at c. What this tells you is that if the series obtained by plug-in x is equal to c in this series converges, then we say that this power series converges at x is equal to c. Okay, that's what this uh, definition tells you. All right, uh, let's move on. Next, we have uh, this theorem, uh, theorem 8.2. The convergence of a power series in x at a non zero point implies the convergence on an interval. Okay, this is a very interesting theorem. Let's go over the theorem uh, before we discuss anything else. Let k goes from zero to infinity, a k times x to the power k be a power series in x. Then here are the conclusions. If the series converges at a non-zero point, c, c, c is not equal to zero, uh, then the series converges absolutely for all real numbers b such that the absolute value of B is less than absolute value of C. What does that tell us? This tells us that if the power series is convergent at a one non-zero point, then the power series is convergent for an interval of points, okay, points in an interval. Power series converges for points in a whole interval, okay. So here is the geometry. This is my zero on the real number line. Let's say your C is somewhere here. Then what this tells you is that if your power series converges at this point, X is equal to C, then the power series converges in this entire interval. What is the entire interval? I measure minus C to the left of uh, zero. If this is C, this has to be minus C, right? This power series converges for this entire interval. If I take any number b, if I take any number b in this interval, in this interval, then your power series converges at that number. Okay, that's what this theorem tells you. So b is taken from this interval. When x is equal to b, your power series converges. Okay, so that's the first part. And then uh, the second part, part B, if the series diverges at C, then the series diverges for all real numbers D such that absolute value of C is less than absolute value of D. Okay. So what does that tell us? Again, here is the picture. This is your uh, zero, say this is your C, and then this should be your minus C, right? So what this tells you is that if your series diverges at X is equal to C, then it diverges for all the values in these two intervals. If you pick any value D in these two intervals, then your series diverges. That's what it simply tells you, okay? You pick a D value from here or from here from this interval, either from this interval or from this interval, then your series 
uh, diverges at that chosen B value. Okay. And the, again, the first part tells you that if your series converges at, at a non zero point uh, C, then it converges in, a, in an interval. For any value in this interval, it converges. Your power series converges. Uh, on the other hand, the next part tells you that if your power series diverges at a point C, then it diverges for all the values in these two intervals. All right, uh, that's what about that theorem. I want to uh, prove the first part. I'm only going to prove the first part and I will leave uh, the second part as an exercise for you to try. Uh, let's start with the proof. All right, what do I have to prove? I have to prove that if the power series converges at this point, at this non-zero point C, then if you take any B such that the absolute value of B is less than C, then at that point B, my power series converges absolutely. That's what I need to prove, okay? For that, let me assume that my power series converges at this non-zero point, okay? Assume that, or suppose that, did I prove? Suppose that sigma k goes from zero to infinity, a k x to the power k converges at x is equal to c. Converges at x is equal to c. And let's assume that. And let's assume that absolute value of B is less than absolute value of C. Then we need to show that our power series converges absolutely at this point as well. That's what we need to prove, okay? All right, to prove that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some observations. What do we mean by this series converges at C? We are assuming that this power series converges at x is equal to c. That means this series converges. This statement implies that sigma k goes from 0 to infinity. You plug in x is equal to c in the power series. c to the power k converges. What does that tell you? That tells you that by divergence theorem, limit if this is this series uh, converges, then limit as k approaches to infinity, the k term, this is the k term, right? A k times c to the power k has to, this limit has to be zero by divergence theorem. Okay, if this series converges, then this limit has to be uh, zero by divergence theorem. Of course, if this limit is not zero, then the original series has to diverge, right? So if since this is convergent, convergent, this limit has to be zero by divergence theorem. All right. Now notice that this particular sequence, a k times c to the power k, this sequence converges to zero. That means this sequence has to be bounded, right? We know that all the convergence uh, convergent sequences are bounded. Okay. me write since convergence convergent sequences are bounded there exist this is the there exist symbol okay m greater than zero some upper case m greater than zero such that such that a k times c to the power k, the absolute value of that is always less than that big large number m for all k. That's the definition of a sequence being bounded, okay? For all k greater than or equal to a zero, okay? Now, notice that we are also assuming that absolute value of b is less than absolute value of c. That's also one of our assumptions. This implies that B over C, the absolute value of B over C less than one. 
I'm just dividing both sides of this inequality by C, absolute value of C, then you get this inequality. Okay. Now I'm going to consider this sequence of uh, sequence, uh, combined inequality of sequences. So this is what I'm going to do. Consider, consider this inequality, zero less than or equal to a k times b to the power k, the absolute value of that. This inequality is clearly a true inequality because when you take the absolute value of something, you always get something bigger than or equal to zero. So this is not a problem. Okay. And notice that this is, I can write this in a different way. Okay. I can rewrite this expression this way. Let's see whether you agree with me. Okay. A, a times c to the power k times b over c whole thing to the power k. Would you agree with me? As you can see here, if you apply this power to top and bottom, you get c to, c to the power k in the bottom. That will be canceled with this c to the power k. You just get b to the power k as you just have here. Okay. So that means this is okay. This is uh, the same expression. Okay. Now I'm going to use this inequality. I know that a k, absolute value of a k times c to the power k is always less than m. Okay. I can, of course, uh, apply this absolute value. To, uh, these two terms separately, this term and to this term, then you get this is equal to absolute value of a k times c to the power k times b over c, absolute value of b over c to the power k. Okay, now I know that my a k times c k is less than m for all k greater than zero. So that means I can get another inequality. This is greater than or equal to, I'm going to replace this by m because m is bigger than or equal to absolute value of a k times uh, c to the power k. So this is b over c to the power k. Okay, now I'm going to make an observation. Remember, what did I want to prove? I wanted to prove that. I wanted to prove that my series converges absolutely at this point B. B is a point such that to ab absolute value of B is less than absolute value of C. I want to show that my C series converges at the point B, absolutely, okay? That means I need to show that this series, if you put a sigma sign here, this series converges, right? All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the comparison test. As you can see, both of these Sequences are non-negative sequences, okay? Both of uh, the sequences are greater than or equal to zero. And we know that this sequence is bigger than or equal to, this k term of this sequence is bigger than or equal to k term of this sequence. So I can apply the comparison test to come up with the following, okay? By comparison test, test, Sigma k goes from zero to infinity, a k times b to the power k, absolute value of that, converges. Why does it converge? That's because this is convergent. Your right hand side, this is the bigger sequence. This is bigger than or equal to zero. This is convergent. Why is this convergent? This is clearly a geometric series, right? Let me write converges since the geometric series geometric series k goes from zero to infinity m times b over c absolute value of b over c to the power k converges. Why does it converge? Because we know that the absolute value of B over C is less than one. Looks like this is your R, right? This is R to the power K. View this as R to the power K with R is less than one. Then we know that that geometric series converge. Okay. So that means this series, corresponding series for this uh, term converges. If the bigger series converges, the smaller series should converge by comparison test. Okay. All right, what does that tell you? 
that tells you that our original uh, series converges absolutely because you see we have put the absolute value around the original uh, series this implies that our original series k goes from zero to infinity a k times b k b to the power k converges absolutely Okay, that's the conclusion. All right, that completes uh, that part. And uh, as I said, I will leave the second part as an exercise. Uh, let's move on. Next, I want to uh, walk you through uh, theorem 8.3. Uh, this is uh, an, uh, a consequence of the previous theorem. Uh, here is what the uh, statement of the theorem tells us. Let uh, k, sigma k goes from 0 to infinity, a k times x to the power k be a power series in x, then exactly one of the following can occur. Okay, These are the things that can occur. So exactly one of these things can occur if you have a power series. Okay, So the first scenario is the series converges only at x is equal to 0. Second possibility is there exists a positive real number rho such that the series converges absolutely for all x between minus rho and rho and diverges if x is less than minus rho or if x is greater than plus rho. The last scenario is that the last possibility is that the series converges absolutely for every real number x. Okay, for each of these scenarios, we de define two uh, terminologies. The two terminologies are interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Okay, how do we find the, uh, how, what do we define by the, what do we mean by the interval of convergence in this case, for the first case. First of all, for the case, first case, we are given that the first possibility is series converges only at x is equal to zero. That means if we have your real line here, only at this point, your series converges. Okay, so your interval of convergence from here onwards, I'm going to denote the interval of convergence by IC, I dot C, an abbreviation, okay, interval of convergence. And then for radius of convergence, I'm going to use R dot C dot, okay, RC. For this one, the interval of convergence is going to be just a zero comma zero. Interval of convergence. IC is equal to 0, 0, the closed interval. Notice that this closed interval includes only one point, right? Right? Only 0 is inside that interval. So that is the interval of convergence uh, for the first case. And then what is the radius of convergence for the first case? RC. There is no radius for this uh, interval. This is an interval with 0 length, right? It is from 0 to 0. 0 to 0 means there is no length. Length 0 means radius of convergence is uh, zero. What about the second case? In the second scenario, we have a positive real number such that series converges absolutely for all x in this interval, minus rho to rho. That means this is your rho. Let's say this is your positive uh, real number rho, and then minus rho is somewhere here, right? Because zero is, should be in the middle. What this tells you is that your series, your power series converges absolutely for all values in this interval, and it diverges outside that interval for all values outside that interval. Okay. At these endpoints, we don't know. We need to handle them manually. Okay. We need to analyze these endpoints manually. All what this tells you is that on this interval, if you exist, uh, if your value uh, C is strictly between minus rho and rho, at that value, the power series converges. And if you take uh, a point outside of uh, this interval, then the series diverges at those points. Okay, that's the second scenario. In this case, let me write interval of convergence. I C is going to be in this case minus rho to rho. Actually, there are several possibilities in this case. One possibility is minus rho comma rho. What are the other possibilities in this case? Remember, we don't know what happens at the endpoints, right? So 
the interval of convergence could be minus rho comma rho open interval or it could be like minus rho comma rho this end closed and the other end open the other possibility is that minus rho comma plus rho this end is open this end is closed and the other possibility is that uh, rho comma minus rho comma rho both ends are closed ends that means both endpoints are included okay either one of these intervals could be possible for the second one. okay we will be going over examples to understand what this means all right what is the radius of convergence for the second case for this for this case what is the radius of convergence i'll write it over here remember always the radius of convergence is the half of this length what is the half of this length that is this length right this length is rho so the radius of convergence is rho for the second case as you can see here since there is no length radius of convergence was uh, zero i wrote it in the previous case so radius of convergence here is going to be zero. all right we are down to the last case the series converges absolutely for every real number x that means for if you take any real number your series converges in that case the interval of convergence is clearly interval of convergence is equal to minus infinity comma plus infinity or you could say simply r set of all real numbers okay minus infinity comma plus infinity interval means it is r okay what is the radius of convergence in this case radius of convergence that is the half of the interval of convergence right interval of convergence is this whole interval half of that is this this much that is again infinity right because this extends indefinitely so this length is infinity so interval of convergence is uh, infinity all right uh, that is about that theorem uh, let's move on now let's work on some examples to uh, understand this uh, understand the concepts of uh, interval of convergence and radius of convergence and let's see how to find this for a given uh, series for a given power series let's look at this uh, example uh, find the interval of convergence and radius of convergence for the following power series this is the power series given to you and clearly it takes the form of a power series because you can view this as your a k and this is your x to the power k so it has the standard form of the power series and of course the, if you expand this one uh, this is what you will see okay and the second part is if the radius of convergence is finite analyze the behavior of the series at the end points of the interval of convergence okay that's also very important as i said end points you have to manually and do the end points you have to uh, manually check the end points okay once you find the uh, interval of convergence okay so let's work on this example uh, before we start working on this uh, we will be using this particular theorem to find the interval of convergence okay so to find the interval of convergence we'll be using theorem 7.42 the ratio test for absolute convergence okay so this, let me re recall you the statement of this theorem uh, again this is a theorem that we did in chapter uh, 7 uh, let k goes from 1 to uh, infinity uh, b to bk be a series with non zero terms and assume that rho is equal to limit as k approaches to infinity absolute value of bk plus 1 over bk exists okay that's how you define your rho then if the value of rho is less than 1 the series converges absolutely if the value of rho is greater than 1 the series diverges if the value of rho is equal to 1 then the test is inconclusive okay so we will be using this theorem to determine the interval of convergence for this series as you can see uh, all the criteria uh, for this theorem is satisfied we have non zero terms in this uh, uh, series so we can apply this theorem all what we need to do is we need to calculate this row okay depending on the value of row we can argue we need to have row less than one for our series to uh, convert okay so let's work on this one now first of all i'm going to calculate my row to calculate my row notice that my bk is going to be this whole thing this time this is my bk so by definition 
of rho, my rho is limit as k approaches to infinity, absolute value of bk plus one over absolute value of bk. This is what I need to calculate. All I need to do is find bk plus one and bk, bk is of course we know, uh, and calculate this limit. Limit as k approaches to infinity, absolute value of bk plus one is one over one plus two to the power k plus one times x to the power k plus one divided by bk. bk is just that term, one over one plus two to the power k times x to the power k. Now you need to do some simplification. You need to do some algebra here. I'm not going to show all the work here because you are familiar with these things now. Uh, this is going to be equal to limit. Let me write what you get if you simplify this. This is going to be uh, x times one plus two to the power k divided by one plus two to the power k plus one. Of course, you should, should have absolute value around. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this x to the power absolute value of x because we have absolute value of uh, this thing. So I can separate out the absolute value. This is going to be equal to limit as k goes to infinity, absolute value of x. Pardon me. Absolute value of x times 1 plus 2k, 2 to the power k divided by 1 plus 2 to the power k plus 1. Okay. Now, all what you need to do is I'm not putting the absolute value here because this is all already a positive term. So I don't have to put the absolute value. Okay. So now you need to take the limit as k approaches to infinity, this expression. As you can see, this has nothing to do with k. So you just have to take the limit of this expression. To take the limit of this expression, what you do is you divide both top and bottom by 2 to the power k. If you divide both top and bottom by 2 to the power k, limit k approaches to infinity, absolute value of k, you get 1 over 2 to the power k plus 1 divided by 1 over 2 to the power k plus 2. Now you can take the limit of this one. You will see that you get absolute value of x times one half, or one half times absolute value of x. This is your row. For any x, this is your row. We calculated our row value. What do we need? What is the requirement for our uh, series to be absolutely convergent? We need our row value to be less than one. If row value is less than one, then we know that the series converges absolute. Okay, so I require my row value to be less than one. This implies that absolute value of x one half times absolute value of x should be less than one. This implies that if you multiply both sides by two, absolute value of x is less than two, and of course that is nothing but x is that tells you that by your pre-calculus knowledge, minus two, x has to be between minus two and plus two. Okay, that means by now we know that our interval of convergence include minus two comma two. For sure, this minus two comma two, minus two comma plus two, pardon me. This interval should be within the, inside the interval of convergence. What's the problem here? How do you find the exact interval of convergence? To find the exact interval of convergence, you need to figure out what happens at these endpoints. Once you figure that out, then you have the interval of convergence. Okay. All right. Let's try to uh, analyze what happens at the endpoints. What happens at x is equal to two? What happens at x is equal to uh, minus two? Okay. All right. Uh, let me add a page. When x is equal to plus two. Let's analyze point by point uh, for endpoints, okay? When x is equal to two, to analyze that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in x is equal to two in my power series. I'm going to put x is equal to two here and then analyze that uh, series. If I plug in x is equal to two there, you get this particular series. 
uh, k goes from 0 to infinity 2 to the power k divided by 1 plus 2 to the power k. So we need to check whether this series converges. So how do we determine whether this series converges? This would be a good time for you to uh, pause this video and think about it. Well, you can easily apply the divergence theorem. If the series converges, the sequence should converge to zero, right? But let's take this as my uh, AK and see whether this limit is zero. If this converges, if the series converges, for sure, limit as K approaches to zero, two to the power K divided by one plus two to the power K should be equal to zero. Is that zero? It is not zero. It is clearly not zero. This is going to be one. Okay, I will let you justify that why it is one. Of course, you divide both top and bottom by two to the power k, then you will easily see that as k approaches to infinity, this limit is one. That means this a k does not approach to zero as k goes to infinity by divergence theorem. This original series diverges by divergence theorem. This is divergence. This divergence, this series k is equal to zero to infinity. 2 to the power k divided by 1 plus 2k divergence. Okay, we handled one endpoint. Let's handle the other endpoint. When? Now, this time, when x is equal to minus 2, the other endpoint. Okay, here I'm not going to show the calculation. Calculation is very similar. I'll write the answer here. One can show. That is uh, C. If you plug in uh, x is equal to minus 2 in the original power series, k goes from 0 to infinity. What happens if you put minus 2 here? It becomes, it becomes minus 2 to the power k divided by 1 plus 2 to the power k. Okay, this divergence. You can show that, okay, by following a very similar argument that we did here. All right, now we are ready to uh, find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. And now we know that at these two endpoints, our series diverges. So the interval of convergence, interval of convergence is going to be minus two comma two. The endpoints are excluded. We are not including the endpoint. Open parenthesis. Okay. What is the radius of convergence? Radius of convergence is always the half of the length of this interval. You look at the geometry, minus 2, 0, plus 2. Half of the length of this whole interval means this length. This is clearly 2. So we are done with that example. OK. All right, let's move on. Let's uh, work on uh, some more examples. The next example I want to go over is uh, this example. Find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence for the following series in X. Uh, if the radius of convergence is finite, analyze the behavior of the series at the endpoints of the interval of convergence. They're asking us to do something similar to what we did in the previous example. All right, let's just start with uh, uh, this example, let's work on the first part, part A. Again, to find the radius of convergence, I'm going to use uh, theorem uh, 7.42. Okay, the theorem that I showed you earlier. Okay, this theorem, I'm going to find this particular limit. I'm going to find the row value. Okay, based on the row value, I can uh, make an argument to find the interval of convergence. I argue that I want my row to be less than one in order to find the uh, convergence, interval of convergence. All right, for that, let's calculate rho. First of all, notice that in this case, your bk is going to be this quantity. This is your bk. So now, rho is equal to limit as k approaches to infinity, bk plus 1 over bk. Don't forget, forget the absolute value around them. This is equal to limit k goes to infinity, bk plus 1. To get bk plus 1, you plug in k plus 1 
in this expression. Okay, you plug in k plus one, what, is, what will you get? k plus one factorial times x to the power k plus one divided by, oh, nothing to divide, okay? This is uh, bk plus one, this divided by bk. bk is k factorial times x to the power k. You absolutely of that, of course. And if you simplify this, I'm not going to show you the details, you will get limit as k approaches to infinity, you get absolute value of x times k plus one. Okay, absolute value of x times k plus one. All right, what is this limit? How do you find that actually, let me write it a little bigger here. Um, as you can see, as k goes to infinity, this whole thing is zero if x is equal to zero. If you plug in x is equal to zero here, this product is zero. As a result, this limit is also zero. But if you have any non-zero value here, as k approaches to infinity, this quantity goes to infinity. Since this is non-zero, if you multiply these two things, you get infinity. Okay, so that means for any x not equal to zero, this is this limit is going to be infinity. When x is equal to zero, this limit is one. What does that tell you? That tells you that your row value is zero, zero if x is equal to zero. And your row value is infinity if x is not equal to zero. Because if x is not equal to zero, this is some number, some positive number, as k approaches to infinity, this goes to infinity, so this product will be infinite. Okay. So this is the radius of convergence. As you can see, your radius of convergence is less than one only when x is equal to zero. When x is not equal to zero, it is bigger than one. Infinity is bigger than one, right? So if you want your power series to converge absolutely, then your rho should be less than one by theorem 7.42. You want your row to be less than one for your series to converge absolutely. Okay. So this series converges absolutely only when x is equal to zero. Let me write it by theorem 7.42. The given series series converges absolutely. only at x is equal to zero. At all the other points, it is diverse. So can we write the radius of convergence and the interval of uh, convergence? Interval of convergence in this case is zero comma zero, the closed interval, which contains only one point. And then the radius of convergence, RC, is going to be zero because there's no radius for this uh, interval, okay? There's no length for that interval, so the radius of convergence is zero. All right, that completes that example. I want to go over the next example as well, because we are applying a different theorem to find the interval of convergence for this uh, particular example, okay? As you can see here, the difference between these two examples is here only uh, factorials, kind of factorial involved. Of course, uh, k power is involved, but factorial is involved. When factorial is involved, always we use this method. You find rho this way when factorial is involved. But when only exponents are involved, if you take this example, as you can see, looks like only exponents, uh, are, exponents are involved. There are no factorial. In that case, maybe the root test for absolute convergence would be better in this kind of situation, okay? If you have only exponents, you go with the root test for absolute convergence, okay? This is the root test for absolute convergence uh, from uh, the, uh, chapter seven, so theorem 7.355. Uh, let k, let's recall the theorem. Let sigma k goes from one to infinity, a k be a series and assume that rho is limit k goes to infinity, kth root of absolute value of a k o limit k goes to infinity, uh, ab absolute uh, absolute value of a k to the power one over k. Okay, this limit is what we call rho, 
And here are the conclusions. If rho is less than one, the series converges absolutely. If rho is bigger than one, series diverges. If rho is equal to one, test is inconclusive. Let's apply this uh, theorem, okay? Let me add a page uh, there. So first of all, uh, I need to find this limit. I need to find limit as k approaches to infinity, absolute value of a k to the power one over k. Okay, let me find that. That is my rho. Part B, rho is going to be limit as k approaches to infinity, absolute value of a k to the power one over k. Notice that here your AK is this whole thing, okay? This is going to be your AK. So I'm going to copy that over there, okay? So this will be, this will be equal to limit as K approaches to infinity, absolute value of AK, that is two over K to the power K times X to the power three K, the absolute value of that to the power one over k. Okay, of course you can uh, send this one over k to the power uh, one over k power to inside of this absolute value. Then you get this is going to be equal to limit as k approaches to infinity two to the power k. When you apply this one over k power with this one to this term, this term. This the k and one over k will be cancelled. You just get two over k. And then if you apply one over k power to this term, it becomes just x cube. Don't forget the absolute value around. Okay. This is nothing but limit as k approaches to infinity, absolute value of x cube times two over k. Clearly, this limit is zero. When k approaches to infinity, this has nothing to do with k. k is only here. As k goes to infinity, two over k goes to zero. As a result, this whole thing is zero. That means for all x, rho is zero. This is true for all x. That means rho is less than one. Zero is less than one. Rho is less than one for all x. That means our series converges for all x in this case. This implies that of a series, original series, k goes from zero to infinity, two over k to the power k times x to the power three k converges absolutely for all x by the theorem that I showed you here, okay, to test for absolute convergence. Seven point three five five. Okay, so what is the interval of convergence here? Interval of convergence is minus infinity comma infinity because series converges for all x, and then radius of convergence is going to be infinity again. That is the half of the length of this interval. That is okay. Done. All right, uh, let's move on. Next, I want to uh, talk about the power series in X minus X naught, okay? Instead of just X, this time we have X minus X naught in place of the uh, X, okay? So let's uh, go over this definition. Again, let uh, AK, K goes from zero to infinity, be a sequence of real numbers. Let X be a variable and x naught be a real number, a power series in x, in x minus x naught is a series of the form sigma k goes from zero to infinity, a k times x minus x naught to the power k. Notice that in the previous power series, we just have x here. Now, instead of x, we have x minus x naught. Okay, we say that this is the power series around x naught sometimes, okay? That is, uh, this is the expanded version of the uh, power series in X minus X naught. And if you, of course, expand this one by plugging K is equal to zero, one, two, three, uh, so on and so forth, this is what you get. 
Okay. And here is uh, again an important part. When do we see this? When do we say that this power series converges at a point, at a given point, x is equal to t? Here is the definition. If t is a real number at which the series of constants k goes from 0 to infinity, a k times c minus x naught to the power k converges, then we say that the power series, given power series, converges at x is equal to c. Okay. Or in other words, when do we say that this power series converges at x is equal to c? We say that this power series converges at x is equal to c if the series obtained by plugging x is equal to c in this series converges. You plug in x is equal to c here, and the resulting if the resulting series converges, then we say that this original power series converges at x is equal to c. Okay, that means if this converges, we say that original power series converges at x is equal to c. All right, let's move on, and we have a similar theorem, just like the one we did uh, for the previous power series definition. Here is the theorem. Let's go over theorem 8.5. Let sigma k goes from uh, 0 to infinity, a k times x minus x naught to the power k be a power series in x minus x naught, then exactly one of the following can occur. Okay, then exactly one of the one of these three uh, possibilities are there. But the first possibility is the series converges only at x is equal to x naught. The second possibility is there exists a positive real number rho such that the series converges absolutely for every x between x minus rho and x, pardon me, for, for all x between, for all x in x naught minus rho and x naught plus rho and diverges if x is less than x naught minus rho or if x is bigger than x naught plus rho. And the uh, last possibility or the last scenario is the series converges absolutely for every real number x. Here are the pictures for each case. For the first case, series converges only at x is equal to 0. That means it converges only at this point. In that case, the interval of convergence is, contains only one point. You may write that as 0, 0, the closed interval. It has only one point. And the radius of convergence is, of course, 0 because there's no length for this interval. And then for the second one, interval of convergence, you have several possibilities for interval of convergence. It could be either the open interval, this open interval, or it could be a one sided, one side closed and one side open, or this side open and this side closed, or both sides closed. Okay, so there are four possibilities. I'm not going to write down those four, four, four possibilities, just like what we had in the previous case. Okay. And of course, I can write the radius of convergence here. What is the radius of convergence? That is half of the length of this interval that is clearly rho, because this length is rho. And here, of course, interval of convergence is clearly, for the third case, minus infinity comma infinity, all real numbers. And the radius of uh, convergence is clearly infinity, because half of the length of this interval is, again, all right, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's work on some examples now. Uh, this is the example that I want to go over. All right, let's go over this example. Uh, find the interval of convergence and uh, radius of convergence for the following series. These are the two series given to us. If the radius of convergence is finite, analyze the behavior of the series at, uh, at the endpoints of the interval of convergence. Okay, so let's work on the first part. For the first part, again, I'm going to use the theorem uh, 7.42 that we used earlier uh, to find the interval of convergence. So I'm going to calculate the row value. Okay, to calculate row value, notice that this is my BK in this case. If you look at that, the whole series, my BK is going to be that term. So my row value is equal to limit as k approaches to infinity bk plus 1 divided by bk, of course, the absolute value around them, 
this is going to be equal to uh, this is going to be equal to limit as k approaches to infinity bk plus one to get bk plus one you replace k plus one in this expression uh, k by k plus one okay you replace your k by k plus one in this expression to get bk plus one so what is that going to be that is going to be minus one to the power k plus two one over k plus one x plus two over k plus one again that is your bk plus one divided by bk okay that is your bk you just plug in bk here okay that is minus one to the power k plus one one over k x plus two to the power k okay that is your uh, b uh, this whole thing is your b k plus one over uh, b k now we need to simplify this okay since we are taking the absolute value, you can just omit these uh, negative powers, negative powers of minus one. Okay, doesn't matter what power we have here. At the end of the day, we are going to get rid of this because this thing is going to be either minus one or plus one. Since we are taking the absolute value, it doesn't have an effect. Okay, so this is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to limit as k approaches to infinity. I'm going to do, do the reciprocal rule here. You get you get if you simplify this part, you get k times x plus two to the power k. Notice that this k comes all the way to the top. Okay, when you do the reciprocal rule, k plus x plus k uh, two to the power k plus one divided by k plus one times x plus uh, two to the power k. Okay, so if you simplify this you will get this is going to be equal to limit k approaches to infinity x plus 2 absolute value of that of course since you have absolute value around here i'm forgetting the absolute value here times k over k plus 1 Notice that I'm not putting the absolute value for this term because uh, this is already positive, okay? Because k is a uh, non-negative number, okay? All right, now, what is this limit? Can you find this limit? As you can see, this x plus two uh, has nothing to do with k. So k happens only here. If you take the limit of this one, this is clearly one, okay? You have seen how to take the limit of expressions like this. So that limit is one. So this is simply, absolute value of x plus 2. Now by theorem 7.42, for absolute convergence, we need for absolute convergence. Yes, we need, what do we need? We need rho to be less than 1. What is rho? Rho is absolute value of x plus 1. It should be less than 1. This implies that x plus 2 has to be between minus 1 and plus 1. This is from your pre calculus class. Okay. So if you remove the absolute value, it turns out that x plus 2 has to be between minus 1 and plus 1. That means if you subtract 2 from each term, you get x should be between minus 3 and minus 1. You just subtract 2 from every term. If you subtract 2 from the middle term, it is just x. If you subtract 2 from this one, you get minus 3, and then here you get minus 2. Okay. All right. That means our interval of convergence should contain this interval minus 3 to minus 1. Minus 3 to minus 1 should be inside the interval of convergence. The only remaining piece is we need to figure out what happens at the endpoints. What happens when x is equal to minus 3? What happens at x is equal to uh, minus 1? Okay, let's figure that out. Let's do the boundary analysis. Let me say when x is equal to minus 3. 
let's analyze the left boundary point first. Now to analyze that, what do I have to do? I'm going to have to plug in x is equal to minus three in your original series given to you, okay? If you plug in x is equal to minus three here, you get minus one to the power k, right? So let me do that here. Then our original series becomes x is equal to, uh, you plug in x is equal to minus three, then you get k goes from zero to infinity, one to infinity, pardon me. It goes from one to infinity here. Yeah. Minus one to the power k plus one times minus one to the power k divided by, let me actually write the entire thing so that you see what's going on really. Minus three plus two to the power k divided by k. As you can see here, you have a k in the bottom. You have a k in the bottom. So this is what you have, okay? Now we can simplify this. Minus three uh, plus two is just sigma. K goes from one to infinity minus one to the power k plus one Notice that minus one to the power k plus one, this is minus one to the power k, it becomes minus one, right? If you add these two, uh, it is uh, minus one to the power two k plus one, so that is minus one. Let me actually uh, write here, minus one to the power k plus one, here it is k divided by k, this is equal to minus times k goes from one to infinity, one over k. Okay, so this product is uh, minus one. If you uh, take the product of these two, it will, uh, it will be minus one. So I, I pulled out that minus sign. Okay, so then you get this one. What can you say about this? What can you say about this series? Is this familiar to you? This is the harmonic series, right? We know that the harmonic series diverges. Okay, this is the harmonic series. And it diverges. So our series, series diverge at x is equal to minus three. Now let's analyze, analyze when x is equal to the other boundary, when x is equal to uh, minus one other endpoint. To analyze uh, the other endpoint, again, I'm going to have to plug in x is equal to minus one in the series, okay? If you plug in x is equal to minus one here, what would you get? You put uh, minus one. The series becomes, k goes from one to infinity, minus one to the power k plus one, times minus one plus two to the power k divided by k. This is nothing but sigma k goes from one to infinity minus one to the power k plus one divided by k. This is the alternating harmonic series, okay? By using alternating series test, we can see that the series converges, okay? By alternating series test. Test, this series converges. K goes from one to infinity, minus one to the power, K plus one divided by K converges. That implies that our original series converges at x is equal to minus one. So what is the interval of convergence now? We know that when x is equal to minus three in the left endpoint, it diverges. But in the at the right endpoint, series converges. So the interval of convergence, interval of convergence is going to be minus three comma minus one 
but minus 3 excluded, that means open uh, parentheses, and then here minus 1 is included. That is the interval of convergence. What is the radius of convergence? Radius of convergence is the length of half of the length of this interval. Okay, you take this interval minus 3 minus 1. This length is whole length is 2, half of that is 1. Radius of convergence is 1. Okay. All right, that completes that example. Let's move on to the next one. Part B. For part B, I'm going to uh, again use the same idea, 7 point, uh, theorem 7.42. Okay, I'm going to compute again rho. Rho is defined to be limit as k approaches to infinity bk plus 1 over bk, the absolute value of course. Uh, we need to compute this limit, okay? Limit k approaches to infinity bk plus 1. Notice that here BK is this whole thing. This is your BK. Then the BK plus one will be, uh, let me write BK plus one here. Okay. This is going to be your BK plus one. To get BK plus one, you replace the K plus one in this expression by uh, k, uh, k in this expression by k plus 1. If you put k plus 1 here, this becomes 2k plus 1. So I have 2k plus 1 factorial here. Notice that this is the factorial notation. Okay, Remember, the factorial of k is, we define this many times, factorial of k is 1 times, 2 times, 3 times, all the way up to k. Okay, That's the definition. All right, so this is uh, bk plus 1, and then, of course, this is bk. It is just this expression. Now we need to compute that limit, okay? So how do we compute that limit? First of all, let's apply the reciprocal rule there. Limit k approaches to infinity. If you do the reciprocal rule, you will get absolute value of x minus pi times, times you get, 2k plus 1 factorial 2k plus 1 divided by factorial 2k plus 3. How would you simplify this? This is not bad actually. So if you consider 2k plus 1 factorial, by definition, this is 1 times 2 times all the way up to 2k plus 1. You want that, that to be divided by you want that to be divided by 2k plus 3 factorial, right? 2k plus 3 factorial, that is going to be equal to 1 times, this is divided by 1 times, 2 times, all the way up to 2k plus 1 times, 2k plus 2 times, times 2k plus 3. Okay, as you can see, all the term, these terms will be cancelled up to here. One will be in the top. In the bottom, you have this product 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 3. So this will be equal to, this will be equal to limit as k approaches to infinity, absolute value of x minus pi divided by 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 3. That's what you have. Of course, I don't have to put the absolute value around this expression because it's positive. Okay. All right. What is that limit? Regardless of the value of x, as you can see, as k approaches to infinity, as k approaches to infinity, this quantity goes to infinity. That means this whole thing will be 0. This is 0. That means your rho is equal to zero, which is less than one, of course, for all x. No matter what x value you plug in here, this expression is zero. This limit is going to be zero as k approaches to infinity. That means your rho value is zero, which is less than one. 
So the series, original series converges absolutely for all X. So by theorem 7.42, double check the theorem. Seven point four two. Series. What I mean by the series is the original given series. Okay, this series. Series converges absolutely. Absolutely for all x. That means interval of convergence is going to be minus infinity comma infinity radius of convergence rc radius of convergence is going to be again infinity because that is the half of the length of this interval that is clearly okay all right that completes uh, that example here is the uh, last example that i want to uh, go over let's go over this uh, quickly Show that if m and uh, b are real numbers and m is not equal to zero, then a series of the form uh, sigma k goes from one to uh, zero to infinity, a k times m x plus b to the power k is the power series in x plus b over m. Can we uh, show that? Actually, that's not uh, hard. It's kind of a trivial thing. Let's show that. This is nothing but a power series given that m is not equal to c. Okay, so this series, I can rewrite this series in a different way without changing the series. Notice that, let me first write the series actually mx plus b to the power k. This is equal to sigma k goes from 0 to infinity a k now i am going to pull out an m from this uh, expression if i pull out an m from this expression that becomes m times x plus b over 2 right if i pull out an x m from this expression it, it is m times x plus b over m this b over m is okay because i am assuming that m is not equal to 0 if m is equal to 0 you cannot do this because b over m, then uh, 0 in the bottom, you are in trouble. That's why we need m not to be there. Okay. So if I pull out m from this one, this is what you get. Now you apply the kth power to both of these terms, to this term, to the first term, and to the second term. Then you get m to the power k times x plus b over m whole thing to the power k. Now, as you can see, this has the standard form of the power series. Of course, in that case, your new AK will be this whole thing. Okay. This could be written as sigma k goes from zero to infinity, infinity, AK times MK. I'll write capital AK for that. Capital AK is nothing but this thing. Lowercase AK times MK times x minus minus b over m to get the exact form of the standard form of the power series in x minus x naught okay okay as you can see here clearly this is x naught this is in the standard form of the power series in x minus x naught with x naught is uh, minus b over m so it is a power series even though a series is given in this form it is it turns out that this is going to be a power series at the end of the day you can rewrite this so that it looks like a power series. All right, given that, then the next part of that example is then find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence for this given series. Okay. To find the uh, interval of convergence, again, I'm going to use theorem 7.42 to first I find rho, the value of rho. Okay. So this is going to be my row, okay? Row is limit k approaches to infinity, absolute value of bk plus one over bk, and that is going to be, you can find bk plus one. This is your bk, right? You can find bk plus one by 
replacing your k by k plus one in this expression. You put k plus one here, k plus one here, k plus one here, k plus one here. Okay, then you get this divided by bk. bk is the same expression as this one. Now you need to uh, do some simplification. Okay, I'm not going to show you the details of the simplification because we have done this many times. Uh, if you simplify this uh, using the reciprocal rule, you will get limit as k approaches to infinity. This is what you are going to get. 2x minus 3, the absolute value of that, times k plus 1 times 3k plus 1 divided by k times 3k plus 1, 3k plus 4, pardon me. Now you need to take this limit, limit as k approaches to infinity. As you can see, this has nothing to do with k. So k is happening here. You take the limit of this expression. Clearly, the limit of this expression is 1. Why is that? Because if you simplify the top, the highest degree term in the top is 3k squared. In the bottom also, the highest degree term is 3k squared. That means the limit is 3 over 3, which is 1. So this is equal to 2x minus 3, the absolute value of 2x minus 3. Now, we know that for absolute convergence, absolute convergence, we need, what do we need? You need your row value to be less than 1. Okay, so now if you simplify this, what does this mean? This means this implies that 2x minus 3 has to be greater than minus 1, less than plus 1. Now, solving this combined inequality, if you solve that uh, combined inequality, uh, you get x is between 1 and 2. Okay, at least right now we know that. 1 comma 2 is inside the interval of convergence. All what remains is to find, to figure out what happens at the end point, x is equal to 1. Okay. So if you analyze the case uh, x is equal to 1, I'm not going to show you the details. You should be able to uh, show that. Show that. It is a homework. Show that the series diverge series diverges at both x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2 that means interval of convergence is just going to be the open interval 1 comma 2 and the radius of convergence is going to be one half in this case that is the half of the interval of convergence the, the distance between these two points is just one one half of that is one half All right, with that, we uh, conclude uh, section 8.1. Uh, I will stop there and I'll see you next time.